Now, your eyewitness weather forecast. Beautiful day today, uh, and I think we have another one. Even better tomorrow, uh, and no matter what, one week from today, we can officially say it is spring. Uh, the equinox Tuesday, the 19th, uh, I have to wait till 1106 at night, but seven days away, uh, we've got some spring weather, but wouldn't you know it, as soon as we get into spring, it's going to start to act more like winter. What? Yeah, that's uh, unfortunately the way it's looking now. Uh, that's beautiful. Uh, lots of sunshine still high up there in the sky, and uh, we'll be setting here uh, within the next 45 minutes to an hour, but really nice out there this evening. 52. Now, it is still a little breezy, but the wind will subside tonight. Uh, the air pressure great, uh, and that should mean some great weather tomorrow. And warming weather, too. Temperatures, I think, tomorrow will eclipse 60. Most of Thursday should be dry. We get into the afternoon, though. There could be a few showers, and I think it's still going to be fairly mild Thursday before wet weather arrives Friday. Parade day, the weather looks fine. Don't be surprised if there's some uh, drizzle or mist early. But I think we'll actually get into some clearing for the afternoon. And then I have this little question mark next to a rainy St. Patrick's Day. Because some of the new information, we get a little bit of luck. And we may actually see rain taper off by the afternoon. And then colder weather returns as we go into next week, just in time for spring. Uh, not much going on out there tonight. Uh, it is high and dry. Uh, temperatures in the low 50s at last check. Utica, Rome, upper 40s. Richfield Springs, Cooperstown, 52. And up north, temperatures here in the low and mid 40s. So the old storm system from yesterday moving away, still bringing some snow into places like Halifax and down east uh, Maine and into uh, Nova Scotia with that circulation. But that storm moving away, we look to the south and west and we're seeing all of this milder air kind of flood uh, the eastern uh, part of the country, and that will uh, return for us tomorrow as well. Warm into parts of Texas, and I think uh, we should have a decent amount of sunshine through the day tomorrow, so that should help uh, propel temperatures into the low and mid-60s. The only teeny tiny little fly in the ointment is there might be a quick five-minute sprinkle somewhere tomorrow. It's probably not even worth mentioning. It's actually a uh, warm front that's going to come on through. So once we get that warm front through, we should be off and running, partly to mostly sunny, I think low to mid 60s as so we get into the afternoon. Thursday, clouds will start to increase. And by the finish of the day towards sunset, which now is towards 7 o'clock, uh, the weather should be fine. But we get towards sunset, there might be a few showers approaching uh, at that point. Clear to partly cloudy, calm, quiet tonight, and then through the day tomorrow, partly to mostly sunny again, that brief little isolated five-minute sprinkle or shower. 64, and here's another way to illustrate this. Look at the deep reds out there in the um, upper Midwest. Those are going to be with us right through uh, the end of the week, but let's enjoy it uh, because the weather is going to change heading into next week. So 64 tomorrow. Thursday shower late, but up near 60. Friday's kind of rainy. 52. Parade day weather should be okay. Could be a little cloudy and cool in the morning. 50. Uh, and then hopefully we can get the rain to taper off for some breaks of sun for St. Patrick's Day. It will be cooler though. Upper 40s and then some scattered snow showers as we go into next week. Spring officially Tuesday <laughs> and only 38. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I, I'm speechless. I know. You know, it's just, it's been so topsy-turvy this winter yeah. with a warm start to March. We have to uh, make up for it at some point. All right. Thanks, Craig. Yep. Still to come on Eyewitness News at 6, Governor Hochul has announced over $111 million in investment in railroad infrastructure. That story and more coming up next.